Hello, my name is Jason J. Rock Houston. You guys are listening to an interview being done tonight um, for um, Under of Influence. It's my great pleasure to be speaking with two of the members of the um, Faith No More tribute band, uh, Fa No More, um, based out of Los Angeles, California. And we're speaking with uh, lead singer um, Kerry Rappaport and um, Will Del Pizzo, the guitar player. How are you both doing tonight? Doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing just fine. And now, um, uh, you know, I'm doing research uh, for um, these interviews. Um, I'm always looking for bands to interview on Facebook, and I came across your guys' um, Facebook page, and, um, and and right away I wanted to talk to you for a simple fact that um, uh, that there's really not that many um, Faith More tribute bands out there, and I was kind of curious. Are you surprised by that? Um, I at least for me, I don't really know what to watch. Um, 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 you know, put, putting that on a Craigslist trying to look for a singer, I was really very happy because I had toyed with the idea of creating one for a long time. Yeah, and, and you know, it's kind of um, interesting when um, I was talking to Will on the phone, um, you know, earlier this week and setting this interview up, um, you know, me and him were kind of, um, I'm kind of laughing about the fact, just as you guys are getting this band going, um, Faith No More themselves decided to get back together and release a new album. What, what do you think about that? Uh, well, you want to take that? Or? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, the bassist, Victor, and I were kind of throwing around ideas of what we want to do. Um, and uh, I've always loved the, the, the real thing. I think it's my favorite album that'd be good. So it's really kind of odd timing because we kind of figured that we were going to do something. A bunch of people jumped on board. And then, um, you know, Faith and Lord has been kind of doing festivals here and there and, mm-hmm. and little stuff like that. But um, they came out full swing this year, so it's actually kind of good timing. Yeah, let me ask you now. Now, you, you mentioned the you know that classic Faith No More album, the real thing. And um, when people, most people think of Faith No More, that's the kind of album they go to. Um, have you had a chance to hear any of the um, new album? And what are your thoughts on the newer stuff? I, I like I like the album overall. For me, um, I had um, gotten the album you know as soon as it came out. I had heard the songs performed live um one time they came to LA I ended up going to all three shows because I'm a dummy like that <laughs> and uh really love um songs like Separation Anxiety Superhero um some of the other stuff is just you know it's typical Faith No More to me which is they do what they do they don't give you know two shits whether or not the fans like it yeah, yeah. they really hope the fans like it but you're gonna get a little bit of something for every, you know, something for everybody. Kind of evidenced by how they were on Angel Dust, I think. You know, it was you had a lot of radio friendly songs mixed in with a lot of really weird, obscure stuff, and I think that's what the album provides this time. Up now. And then um, I was curious as a fan, what do you think about uh, Jim Martin's decision not to return to the band? Tragic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, you know what? Like, nothing against the guys that they've had or who they have now um, to me Jim Martin was really kind of what brought it all together because um, just what he was doing in, in comparison to what the whole rest of the band was doing um, that's just kind of the faith more that I've always known and I've grown up with um, he's a phenomenal guitar player it's a shame that um, they can't really seem to get on the same page and stuff like that it's also nice to see they're not doing it just for money yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. When you see bands do stuff like that, it hurts. It just hurts, you know? Um, so it's not Like, you see Ozzy doing the No More Tours tour. Yeah, <laughs> for the umpteenth time. <laughs> like 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now, um, I guess the next logical uh, question is, um, you could share, each of you guys could share how you first got into um, being a Faith No More fan. Oh, God. Um, for me, it was, you know, it was MTV watching the epic video uh-huh. I saw you know them jumping around and providing something that was colorful brash and new and you know as soon as my patent flipped his hair over and saw me you know, I saw the other side chance I said oh my god I'm doing my hair like that and I had my hair like that for 25 years wow 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 uh, so um, yeah we said it's actually ironically grown out now that I'm <laughs> you know, I'm not going to say no more cover band. I don't have that hairstyle anymore. But, uh, no, I mean, it 
it, that was the first moment where I listened to them and then I had actually bought Introduce Yourself and heard the songs with, you know, with Chuck Mosley uh-huh. and really, really just fell in love with the musicianship of the whole band. Yeah, and you know, you bring up an interesting point, um, Carrie. You know, most people, when they think of Faith No More, they, they typically just think of a mic, um, you know, you know, um, you, you know, um, with, with Mike, but um, they had Chuck Mosley too. Um, are you a fan of both guys? Yeah, I mean, in each different way. I mean, talent-wise, obviously, I I feel Pat and blows Chuck Mosley out of the water. Yeah, yeah. I, it was somebody that I forget which journalist is better. I really it really resonated with me that what Mosley has is this charming undertone, uh-huh. even though, every, you know, everything's flat and, you know, completely out of key, and you can tell he's under the influence of something, usually most of the time, uh-huh. there's still something that's so endearing about how he sings in, in, you know, in the early recordings that really resonates and matches the songs well, yeah, and so, yeah. so on that note, it's more of a yeah. sense of humor and that, you know, that effervescence that Patton will still be able to um, perpetuate in, in future recordings. Yeah, because, you know, Mike Patton, he's kind of become the face and the voice of the band um, all these years. And so um, when you guys, um, you know, do a show, I was curious, do you play material from the band's entire catalog or just concentrate on, like, um, the Mike Patton years? When we uh, When you guys are performing. Out, yeah. uh, all we did was play the real thing. We yeah. came out and invited by together and said, we're just going to play the, uh, the real thing. I I love Mike Pat. I, you know, when I first got into Faith No More, I didn't get it, uh, but I knew this guy could really, really, really sing. And yeah. It took me years to kind of figure out what was going on with him and really kind of fall in love with him. Um, in terms of what we're doing, um, we certainly kind of played a quote-unquote hit. Yeah. Um, you know, we know songs from, you know, most of their, a lot of their catalog throughout the whole year. I mean, Chuck was only, what, one album? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, so technically two. Really, technically two. But, technically yeah. two. Uh, but it's very interesting. He played some of the really early stuff off the first album, and it didn't go over as well as we thought it would. And it was just kind of flat, which was very, very, very strange because, you know, I mean, uh, Introduce Yourself is a big song of theirs, and, uh, um, and we care a lot. We care a lot. I mean, it's a theme to a, a TV show. Yeah. So it has that that uh, recognizability, which is not a word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But people recognize recognize the song. Like it was very strange because we played it, and it really kind of fell flat. And really, people just kind of react to the pat years, which is really the whole band. Um, but people really react to all that and I know for me especially on the real thing and even Angel does yeah. um, their song writing um, it sounds simple on the records and when you really start diving into it and really hear what's going on the whole rhythm section they're monsters and the fact that um, Jim plays back to that on some point and they switch back and forth so fluidly even within the song it's way more complicated than I even anticipated. Wow. Um, so certainly we try to hit on everything, um, but more importantly, we just want to kind of put on a good show and have people walking away going, holy cow, what just happened to my face? Well, yeah, because, yeah. yeah, you know, you, you've made a couple of good points in the fact that, um, you know, most people, when they think of Faith No More, like, they, they do think of a Mike Patton era, because, you know, typically when people, most people discovered Faith No More was through the real thing and Angel Dust. You remember all those MTV videos? I mean, um, who could forget that? And then, like you said, they've been, they've been, you know, away for several years now. They're just coming back, and so people are either getting, you know, introduced some, you know, there's a whole new breed of fans coming with this new album, and, and then the... Um, old faithful fans are returning you, you know, say, oh, I, I want to see what they're doing after all these years. I want to see if they're the same band that I remember, you know? Absolutely. And so, like, um, any ch- chance you guys will be throwing any of these tunes from a new album into your set, or are you going to pretty much just stick to the classic stuff? That's a good question. Um, you know, as we play and we feel it out, you know, we'll just see what's working and what's not, and we get a lot of feedback from our fans after the show, yeah. people that just walk up and they're they're happy because they're excited 
actually if you have a faith in what ever been. So we end up um we end up listening to them. Yeah, yeah. Seeing what works and what doesn't. So if there's more demand for it, absolutely we'll do it. Um like I said, you know, if, now I would love to do superhero in two seconds, but if it falls flat to the crowd, yeah. you know, why am I doing it? And, and, and let me ask you, I see, um, I'm looking on your guys' Facebook page as we speak, and I see there's an ad up there for um, the reissue of um, The Real Thing. Have you, either of you guys had a chance to get your hands on that or listen to any of the stuff off of that? Not yet. I'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to hear it because Angel is just the funniest because when I will get there, album is The Real Thing. Mine is Angel So Yeah. Um, I'm excited for both. I mean, I think you could. I think it'd be a cool thing to like do both those albums, kind of in its entirety, because those those are like I said, the two. When most people think of Faith No More, those are the two albums that right away come to mind. Now, I was curious, um, how long has this band been together? Gee, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, um, uh, about a year. I mean, I would say somewhere in there. Uh-huh. We had two, unfortunately. Um, kind of go through a, a minor lineup change, um, but I would say about a year. It took us a while to find uh, to find Carrie to come mm-hmm. in and kind of knock this one out of the park. Um, there's a lot of people who wanted to come in and sing, uh-huh. and um, it's big shoes to fill. Yeah, it's certainly big shoes to fill. So we, you know, we kind of jumped around from four or five singers. Um, and then she came in and just knocked it out of the park, and then we were kind of off and running, um, so to speak. So, yeah, a year? Question mark? Question mark? <laughs> wow. So now let me ask you, Will, because um, typically you'd think like putting a Faith No More um, tribute band together, but you'd, you'd be looking for a guy that looks and sounds like Mike Patton, kind of. Um, how surprised were you when she came to her audition and, like as you say, just knocked, knocked out of the ballpark? I mean... Did you have any reservations, you or any of other guys, about having a female singer? Or just a matter of, you know what, she she really has got it down. <laughs> um, you know, the, the chauvinist in me is like, women aren't in bands, man. Yeah. That's not how you do it. Um, you know what, in the end, I didn't, she did not get out of the park. Yeah. You, just, you know, if you can do it, you can do it. Um, like I said, it's big, big shoes to fill. Yeah. Um, she does it very, very well. Um, she put all, you know, my reservations, and yeah. she's been doing this forever, like we've been doing this, so it wasn't like we had to, like, coach somebody up on how mm-hmm. to be a band, because uh, Tad is not just a singer. You know, like you said, he's kind of the face of everything. Yeah. Everybody knows Tad. There's Tad and fans. There's people who, yeah. you know, love Tomahawk and all, all his other side projects just because he's in it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um, yeah, when she came in, I can't even remember what song. We played two or three songs, and we all just kind of looked at each other and said, "Yeah, okay, so we're gonna book a gig in a month, and let's just make it happen." Yeah, so it, it, yeah. When she, she stepped in, and it wasn't much effort, so it made everything really easy. Yeah, because I, I tell you guys, there's a there's a Scorpions tribute band out there um, called Love Drive, and I, I've seen them a couple times, and and they're another great example of that. That, that they got a female lead singer, but man, she just she can scream just like Claus Mine. She she's got the part down. She she looks the part. Uh, so, you know, so I say more power to you guys. It's not necessarily um, you know as they say you know women can rock just as good as a uh, guy, but she she's got the pipes, and why not? <laughs> It's a lot of fun because, you know, I came from a long line of uh, doing covers for a year. I mean, for rather for years. Um, I did mostly male singers. Yeah. So back in 2000, I was covering a lot of Rage Against the Machine, Corn, Disturbed, wow. and Chili Peppers, a lot of Pantera, you know. Wow, like, wow. Uh, I've got a four and a half octave range, so I've kind of been very fortunate with having that kind of ability to go from really, really high to really, really low, and actually Mike Pat has been an amazing, huge influence on my my own career. So wow, I wow. always look at him to be extremely fearless and to see if I can tackle anything. And so, you know, yeah, everybody has their limits, but 
I like the idea where somebody says, well, you can't do that. And, you know, he's a prime example of, some, of somebody in the industry who has said, really, I can't, well, watch me. So well, that, that's that's great. I love that attitude. It's fun to break down those conventions. Yeah. I love that attitude. I mean, and, and just hearing that you can cover a band like Pantera, I mean, that, that just shows me, wow, you know, you, you must really have, um, like you say, a, a huge, huge range to your voice. And so what do you have to do to keep your voice in shape, you know? A lot of vocal warm-ups. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just a lot of experience of having to, I mean, I used to do five shows a night with three sets. So yeah. my voice would be wrecked by the end of the week um, just because I was also jumping around with the Mexican. Jumping being yeah. the whole entire time, and so I kind of learned to balance and um, kind of get out of my head and learn amazing breathing techniques. Really, singing is completely breathing, and the idea of you know your body posture has to be in a right way so you're not blowing out and you're not using yeah. the wrong muscles. And mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people are like, "Well, how do you do that?" And, yeah. you know, Hardly, it's just it's just something that you do. You know, it's hard to explain. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I hear you. Yeah. My dad was a, was a DJ, so I went around the house when I was a kid, going, you know, here's how to get yours, kids. You know, welcome to King Tell. So I was doing that since I was getting into things. So all that is technically for me is a lot of paying attention to nuance and trying right. to my best to mimic. Wow, so, so let me ask you, Carrie, now you said you've, you've done cover covers for years, which is typically where you're in a band, and you, rather than covering like just one artist, you might do it, you might throw out a Tom Petty tune, you might throw out an Elvis Presley tune, or, or you know. Oh, absolutely. Um, so wh- h- um, how do you prefer what you're doing now, um, where you're in a tribute band, where you're just playing material from you know one particular band? Is, is that a little more fun for you? Um, with Faith and More, yes. Yeah. Because it's, you know, with the Faith No More band, this, I mean, you're, this is my favorite band. Uh-huh. So this is my dream. Wow, but, wow. I mean, playing a, you know, a small, stupid little bar for, you know, 25 people that are really, really into it just as much as I am. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's better than any show that I've ever played for 3,000 people. So, I mean, I mean, next to playing... It stands yeah. down because the passion yeah. will always be there. The energy is always there. I mean, it's like, I mean, I... You know, it's like I've, I've got a gig with, um, I'm filling in with a cover band tomorrow night. Wow. And so I'm going to be doing everything like No Doubt and Pink. Wow. But we're, we're also going to be doing some fun stuff like ACDC and, you know, a few heavy things, you know, here and there. But primarily, you know, primarily it's light and dance and stuff. And it's, but it's also fun to see people dancing uh-huh. and enjoying themselves to that, too. It's just, for me, it's about seeing an audience react and being passionate about it. So that's why we're trying to focus our set list on the really good songs that we really enjoy so we can be full on with our energy and be able to give that energy to the audience who will give it right back. Yeah, because I, I would imagine, like, being a fan yourself, you know, and like you said, even if you just put together a set list of, of just just the songs that you guys, you know, grew up on or songs, you know, that inspired you, being that you're fans yourself, you're going to be able to play those songs with that much more passion and, and if, you know, and you have a better idea of being fans yourself of what the audience wants to see. So, you know, if it's something you're putting together a show and you enjoy the show, then it's almost a guaranteed thing that your audience is going to, um, you know, dig the show as well. Yeah, I mean, it's all about heart. I mean, I'm sure we'll have seen plenty of shows where, mm-hmm. you know, people just, stand there on stage and people can say yeah that sounds good but I'd rather sit in my car and listen to the CD than uh-huh. pay 50 bucks if somebody's just going to stand there on stage I can name sound a couple exactly like my CD. yeah yeah <laughs> I can name a couple bands I've seen just stand there you're like ah oh, well this was boring yeah <laughs> thanks a lot for showing up <laughs> yeah and, and now let me ask you, Will, because, you know, there's two types of tribute bands. There's there's kind of like, like what you guys do where you just kind of get up on there and you just, um, you know, you, you re- redo the tunes, you know, so to speak. Or, you know, um, and then there, there are other tribute acts where they're really like, um, you'd have a singer like that looked almost dead on like uh, Mike Patton. You, or you in your case, you might be trying to look like Jim Martin. Um, why did you guys decide the route that, you know, we're just going to get up there and just play the tunes and that's our way of paying tribute? Um, you know, 
know, a lot of it, me, like, when I see people do that, I just find it cheesy. Uh-huh. <laughs> to be fair, I just really just kind of find it cheesy and a little tragic. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, and I get what they're doing and it makes total sense. I mean, yeah. if you're going to do it, do it. Yeah. Um, they're probably way farther in their life with this, what they're doing and what I'm doing with this thing, which uh-huh. is fine. Um, I honestly, man, I just don't want to carry all that shit around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just don't want to carry all that shit around. It's well, fun. You know, we, uh-huh. we, we ask a lot of carry. Yeah. We ask a lot of carry. Um, it's fun to go up there and people kind of go like, is this really going to happen, especially yeah. with a female singer? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, so it's fun to just to go up there and play the song. Yeah. And, and play it well. Um, certainly, we do our best to recreate the album as, yeah. it, as best as we can. Um, we're, we really kind of painstake over it. We throw our little flares in there every once in a while because we're musicians. Yeah. You know, um, you know it, it's darn near note for note. Um, just kind of want to recreate the experience for everybody, like dressing up and all that other stuff. I don't want to wear a wig yeah. and the red glasses <laughs> and put goatee on my face. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have the V. I'll play the V. That's fine uh-huh. with me. But, um, you know, I just don't, I just, we just don't want to follow that shit around and do all that nonsense. Yeah, now, now let me ask you if, you, if you were to go, if you had made a decision to go kind of the other way and dress apart, so to speak, um, do you think that would put a little more added pressure on you guys? Because you'd have, you'd have to worry about, okay, do I look the part? Do, am I gonna be able to play the, no, the songs note for note? Um, whereas, I just would have, I would have no problem with it because right uh-huh. now I'm already dealing with the fact that I have, you know, however many eyes in a club instantly staring at me the second I step on stage, going, "A girl, oh, this is gonna be good," and then it's fun to pretty much make people do double takes when we start to play. That's the pressure is gone. Yeah, yeah. And so what's that like for you, Carrie? I mean, like you said, um, you, you have a lot of these naysayers, you know, oh, oh, a girl singer, Faith No More. And then I, I imagine after the show, you must have people coming up to you and say, oh, man, you just, you know, you totally blew me away. But, you know, I, I can't believe what a great job you did. What What is that feeling like? It's fun, but I also feel, you know, it's like, I don't know, I don't, I don't sound like a jerk, but it's just, it kind of sucks that my bandmates don't get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they work just as hard as I do uh-huh. to make sure that it's note for note or sounds just as good. And they don't get the recognition that a singer gets. Yeah, yeah. And that's and that's just the nature of the business. And it kind of it kind of blows because, you know, I'm I'm more of a you know, all for one, one for all kind of person where I'm in a group because it's fun to have a whole bunch of people that care about one thing at the same time, you know. Mm-hmm. and work their hardest because that's the biggest payoff and you know, I'm very thankful and very grateful to anybody that's um, come away with a really good experience after one of our shows because that's what we're trying to provide but I don't know that's like, I think I think there's two things that just happen it's like being being the chick in the band yeah. and being the chick that's just changed your mind it's going to be two things that's kind of working toward me getting a little bit more of the attention, but I, I really wish people could pay much more attention to my bandmates because they're phenomenal. Yeah, and now... Um, you can have all the attention. I don't want to get attention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm like, I, I, you know, I, that's not really my gig. Yeah. I'm looking for the attention. Um, so the more people want to pay attention to her and less attention to me, I am fine with that. <laughs> Yeah, and, and let me ask you on that note, Will, like um, we were saying earlier, Mike Patton has kind of become uh, the face and the and the voice for for, his, for Faith No More, you know, and so, and, and back in the days when Jim Martin was still in the band, you know, those were kind of a two, the two guys that people, everybody automatically think, thought it when they heard the name Faith No More. I was wondering, when you're up there playing guitar, um, do, you, do you find that as many people are kind of, you know, looking at what you're doing because you're kind of playing Jim Martin's part? You know, um, I expect it, um, especially if we're doing a tribute thing. I mean, if you're just kind of doing, like, if 
here, there's a no typical bar band, you have three sets and you're playing whatever. Um, I, I expect people to be critical uh-huh. of it. Like, pressure, not really. Yeah. Um, in the end, I'm just doing this because like, I enjoy doing it. I like playing live. I like playing music. I enjoy the people I'm playing music with. Um, uh-huh. You know, um, if, if they're going to be that hypercritical, yeah. And, and not have a good time with it. It's like, you know what, I'm sorry I disappointed you, but I'm not losing sleep over it. Yeah, there you go. Um, you know, it, it's, I'm not losing sleep over it. it is, so if they want to nitpick, um, that's fine. They can nitpick in their seat with a beer in their hand while I'm uh-huh. up on stage having a good time. Now, now, Carrie was saying, which you know, I think a lot of people um, would, would agree, but, um, but the real thing is like her favorite album from Faith No More. And, and you were saying, though, um, you really favored, uh, you lean more towards Angel Dust. I was curious why that yeah, album... Actually, actually, it was switched. <laughs> I'm the real thing. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so, Carrie, why why do you lean more towards the um, Angel Dust album? I was curious. Um, basically because it's just like, it's just like Patton was able to go from the low growl to uh-huh. way up in his range, and he was providing different vocal sounds. I mean, he had that kind of rough palm weight sort of thing going on with RV. Yeah. And then, you know, with malpractice, you know, you just had him all over the map. Um, so, that was, I mean, my God, I was 18 when that <laughs> album came out. Yeah. It came and uh, it was completely influential for me as a singer. Yeah. To basically say, um, here's something that you liked before and you listened to before, but here it is, something completely new that you weren't expecting, and there are no conventions, and there are no rules, because we just broke them all. Wow, and, and you know, um, even if you look at a song like Epic, um, you know, that came, that was one of the first rap metal things that people ever heard, so you know, they really were innovators back in the day, I mean, um, that came, that really influenced a lot of those new metal bands and stuff that came after, you know, and so it, it, it's no surprise that these albums really have stood the test of time. Great. Yeah, and... Um, well, they're, kind of a, yeah. they're kind of a band band. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's surprising how everybody loves them, and they're not bigger than what they are. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you can't in this either. country, to be fair, though. No. I mean, you yeah. can have all the Q-A, and you can they're still packing 80 uh-huh. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's very true. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's a little surprising because, um, I, you know, I don't know if any Faith No More album, like, right out of the gate, you think it's the greatest thing that you've ever heard in your life. Yeah. I think a lot of their stuff, you got to kind of dive into and really let it grow on you. And it just kind of, it, it just kind of sits with you and you remember it. I, it's just, they it seem to be one of those bands, they're a band band. Yeah. Like, Yeah, but you, you know, yeah, yeah, even, yeah. Even the real thing is, which is considered now a classic album. Um, when it was initially released, like you said, it, it did not become an overnight hit. A lot of the, you know, a lot of reason that album became a hit is it just came out at the right time, and there were all those MTV videos, and and they went on tour with Metallica, and they were um, they were really, you know, everybody's really being spoon fed it, you know, almost like you know when the Black album came out from Metallica, and so. It's just a matter of it. It came out at the right time because even even as you're talking, I'm kind of remembering, you know, um, you know, it wasn't an overnight thing. It, it's you know after you know after we had like two or three videos, then then it became a popular album, and everybody's oh, Faith No More, yeah, they're a great band, but um, they've been around for years before that album really you know broke out. Absolutely. And, and yeah. so yeah. It, um, yeah. And so let me ask you, Will, because you know I got to tell you guys a, a reason I started interviewing. Um, people like you that um, playing the tribute bands is I, I've been to many tribute shows and I enjoy, enjoy it immensely I can't say really I've seen a bad one yet but um, there's a huge misconception out there a lot of people are under the impression that oh musicians that play in tribute bands are failed musicians they couldn't make it do, doing their own original thing and with that being said I gotta ask you um, when you first put this project together did you have any reservations about 
doing the tribute thing or did you think differently about tribute bands before you actually got this project together? Um, I was one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was one of those guys. Uh, I certainly, you know, uh, they're just washed up and tired and they couldn't make it. And um, one of my friends is actually in a cover band, um, was a professional musician in the 80s and 90s, tour musician, um, uh-huh. and made it in the industry. And I saw his band play. He, he has him and a couple other friends. Yeah. He's a four piece. And, um, they just go and they have a good time and they play bars and they play DC and Tom Petty and, wow. and Lizzie and just and they just have a good time with it and that allows me and the guy, the guy I admire a wonderful guitar player uh, a guy named uh, Galen Walker um, he um, he allowed me to look at it differently and understand what it is and, and there's nothing wrong with it I, no. I know certainly when Vic and I um, were thinking about doing something like this. Like, like I said, we threw around a bunch of ideas. I've never been in a tribute band before. Yeah. I had no idea what they're about. Um, all I know is like, yeah, let's just go ahead and play these albums because you know, let's play you know, some big more because we like them. Why not? I haven't heard of it before. Let's do what happens. Well, I, I, mean, I l- kind of stumble <laughs> into it then. I love that, you know, the fact that, you know, here you're doing it now and, and, and somewhat successful, and, and, but, you know, initially you had this, the same reservations, I mean, and, and so I guess after you did the first, um, first show with this band, did that kind of, um, you know, kind of lean you more towards the direction, yeah, maybe, maybe this isn't such a bad thing, it's kind of fun, actually. Um, yeah, I played in a cover band before this, um, which was we played pink and we played no doubt and it was it was I was dying on the inside <laughs> I was just dying on the inside I, I couldn't do it uh-huh. um, so certainly when Vic and I started to figure something out um, God bless Vic uh, <laughs> he, he um he's one thing and one thing only he's like forms up metal all day <laughs> um, which is you know what which is what I am yeah like, yeah that's just who I am. I mean, I, I would imagine. Yeah, I would have. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're, we're self appointed assholes. Yeah, well, that's. We care probably more than anybody else about getting stuff right or what we want and don't want. Yeah, so let me ask you, like, like you, there's probably an audience for that. You know, people would definitely come see you play the real thing in its entirety over and over again. But, but that I, I would imagine too. After a point for 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 the guys in the band, you know, musicians in the band, that would get kind of tiring after a while. And it, whereas if you do songs from throughout the you know entire catalog, it, you can kind of mix it up, and that that keeps it fresh for both the musicians and the band and the fans. Well, I mean, for me, honestly, if we could never play epic, yeah. I would be probably the person in the band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we would have nobody come to our show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that might be the one song that they hear. So I embraced it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so how hard is it coming up with the set list? Like, do you guys typically have the same set list pretty much, or do you, do you change it up a bit? Or do you, I, I imagine you have to obviously play like Epic, like you said, in all the big hits, but um, is it hard balancing, like, you know, I really like this song, but, you know, like you said, we have to play Epic. we got to play Fall to Pieces and, and this and that, and um, that must become quite a chore coming off the set list. We figured it out. 
not be a group text. <laughs> we're really big on, really big on group text. Uh-huh. So, so let me ask you, Will, because you said you're saying the real thing is, you know, your album, and, and that's like I said, that's that one album everybody kind of um, latches on to. But I was curious in doing this project if you've become more of a fan of the entire catalog as opposed to just that one album. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, I love the entire catalog. Um, you know, I'm very fortunate to have a lot of great Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we have to play some of the songs in there, and then learning the songs, you go, wow, that is a lot better song uh, than, <laughs> than what, what I thought it was. It's, you know, it, it, um, it's just a lot better song. It's a lot of fun to play. You kind of go, huh, okay. Um, then you just kind of go, well, it's, it's, in the end, if it's fun for me to play, it's fun. I mean, there's obviously songs where we're playing that for every show. Yeah, because I, yeah, I imagine even when, when you guys, another cool thing about what you guys do, I would imagine, is uh, um, you get you get a chance to throw in some of the deeper cuts that maybe even, you know, Faith No More has never played in concert because, you know, they got to play the hits and and all the radio hits and MTV stuff. Um, and so a lot of times you might play a tune that nobody's, you know, really fam that familiar with, and it's like, wow, that's a Faith No More song? Uh, I, I mean, I think that's so cool that you guys get the opportunity to, you know, turn people on to stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't even for me for a long time. And uh, so when when somebody, I forget who was the one that even proposed it, but you know, picking up a uh, gentle art of making enemies, <laughs> we do Digging the Grave as well. Um, I, I mean, I know, I remember I was hesitated because I was like, oh, they have really that album. That's not my favorite album. But yeah, yeah. okay. And um, I, I, you just learn the nuances, and it's just, they get a lot of making enemies. It's like, wow, that really where Pat and Sean vocally. And that's kind of, in that song itself, it sort of is a reminder of why I like doing cover bands because I can make my voice go really anywhere and just in that song. So it's kind of like doing a cover band wrapped up in one song. And so, so it sounds like Carrie... The whole night yeah. of variety. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but with... Uh, yeah, and are you you guys at all surprised at um, you know how popular the tribute scene has become? I mean, um, you know, for some of these bands, it's it's big business. You know, they're playing the you know big residencies and stuff. Are you at all surprised at the response um, bands like you get? Yes. <laughs>
Yeah. One yeah. of my friends, his girlfriend, was like, I love my pet, and I've been looking, I really, I've been looking for something like this. It's very, very strange, um, but also, like, like if we're in the right area, you know, it's where we mm-hmm. need to be. We're filling a void, as opposed to, like, how many Guns N' Roses tribute bands are there? How many Metallica? Oh, yeah, yeah. Are there? How many DC? DC, DC, I mean, there's, you know, AC, DC, and Thunderstruck. They came out at the same time, you know? I mean, there's a yeah. billion creatures. Out there. Yeah, I, um, I gotta tell you guys, that's initially why uh, I even had the interest to t- um, get in touch with you because um, when I came across your page, that's the first thing I thought. Wow, they're they're filling a nice little void. They got a nice little niche here going in the fact that there's really not. The only, I only come across one other Faith No More tribute. They're called Epic, and I think they're they're a lot newer than you guys. They just recently formed, um, and they're just starting to get their band going. But um, that's the thing you guys really got going for yourself but there's not too many fa- there's not a million other Fate No More tributes out there right now so I, I you know so there's really something to be said about being the original so to speak <laughs> even you know if you are a tribute act <laughs> well and it's funny you can YouTube like Fate No More tribute and there's some people from Boston there's yeah. some people in South America and um, there's a lot lacking you know especially the patent department yeah <laughs> but there's somebody in the group you kind of go like yeah. You know, or they, they just, uh, they're just not kind of doing what they should be doing with it. So yeah. I think certainly in this band, we've got five people who can can kind of handle the material and looking to handle it, handle it well. And nobody's dragging anybody else down. That, that's great. So, uh, we, yeah. we punch each other in the face after the show for each mistake that we make. So it's kind of the whole thing. Well, yeah. Perfect. Well, I gotta tell you guys, you know, one thing I think is really cool about your, your band here is um, a lot of these interviews I do typically uh, um, typically um, is with, you know, one guy or so um, that does all the interviews, and they, a lot of them are run like a business, and I really dig the fact, you know, you guys aren't the only band that's done it like this, but like Will said, you know what, before, before I go ahead and, uh, you know, agree to do an interview, I want to see if, a sing- if I can get all my singer, and I-, I know she'd love to take part in this, and I just thought that's a totally cool thing, that, that shows... That shows, you know, the kinship in the band, how great you guys really get along, and it's it's really all for one, you know what I mean? I, I love that attitude. We're going to war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, uh, I mean, it's... Like I said, yeah. if I can divert any attention from me to somebody else, I'm okay. really fine with that. Yeah. There's a lot cooler guys than me out there doing interviews, so I said, well, if those guys can do it, I can go ahead and talk to somebody, but she's my safety blanket. Oh, there, there you go, there you go, and you know you got somebody to fall back on, and, and that's that's always great to have that um that, that kind of support uh, team. Um, now, now I was going to ask you, like being a Faith No More tribute, I would imagine you can you could play with any you know any number of tributes. You could probably play with an Allison Chains or Pearl Jam tribute or Green Day or <laughs> e- even um you know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, when you guys when you guys do shows, do you typically play with other tribute bands, or do you play with um, original acts as well? Um, we've done both. <laughs> I mean, our, I mean, we really love finding other bands uh-huh. to play with if we can, if we can that yeah. are tributes. Because yeah. just kind of recreating a time of their life, you know. Yeah. For us who are you know, you know slightly slightly older, you know where. We remember, oh yeah, I was listening to this band at this time, or this, you know, these bands were all on that mixtape I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that makes it fun if you can put a night together like that because you're recreating a whole experience. You're bringing back a feeling for an entire evening. And then people get to walk away and go, man, that was awesome. I can't wait to do this again. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. You guys are so right about that. I mean, I mean, House of Blues. Mixtape, yeah, tape. I yeah. don't even know what that is. Yeah, uh, Will, let me ask you: Are you old enough to remember? Uh, do you know what a Do you know what a cassette is, or um, even a record? You, you remember when they had record stores? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I know how to I know how to steal music. The talent showed me how to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, yeah, they're, they're old Ferrari. Yeah, that's funny because like like. The first tape yeah. that I bought was Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation. Don't judge. Great album. No, <laughs> that's an amazing album. Yeah, let's go. I grew up. I grew up with all that pop stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. And then I saw Flash and Guns N' Roses, and I went, well, hell, this is the way it's going to happen. But my first tape was Janet Jackson, Rhythm Nation, and I was playing that 
CD in my car with my wife one day, and she just looked at me and said, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> Well, 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 I bet you wish you had Slash's hair, um, but but let me let me tell you something right now. Um, you know, some of that Janet Jackson stuff, um, as poppy as it was, she had some heavy stuff. I mean, I remember, I remember a guitar lick on. She had this one song called Black, Black Cat or something like that. And, Black Cat, yeah, yeah. But, wow, that, uh, she was really rocking on that. But uh, um, wow, wow. But you know, like like you guys are saying, p places like Paladinos and House of Blues, often they have these great. Um, tribute nights and i'll tell you a um, couple great new tribute bands that i've recently come across that if you haven't had a chance i really strongly suggest you guys check out there's this uh, new uh, ufo band they're called project ufo and you know they're they're filled in a great void because there's really not um, another ufo tribute band out here but i can think of it. and then there's another white snake tribute called burn and, and um, they're doing all that great white snake stuff and there's not really another white snake tribute out here but i can think of so you know those are two other bands that are really filling filling a void and i, I think you know a lot of a lot of times that tribute bands are smart but if they would go like you said instead of doing another led zeppelin tribute let's do something that's not out there <laughs> right yeah yeah well, well will and i are going to put together a company band project very soon <laughs> 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 we're throwing around the idea we're just trying to get the choreography down. It's really hard. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a problem with my left foot and right foot. I think <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I want to ask you guys before I let you go is, um, now it's, it's great that you have this project and it, it's really fun thing and people should definitely check it out. But um, I was wondering if you, if you have anything original on the side that you guys are involved with as far as music wise. Um, we, I know for me personally, nothing really right now. I'm always writing something. Uh -huh. uh, you know, we've kind of thrown around the idea of maybe throwing some original songs and kind of seeing what sticks. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know for me, just personally speaking, it, it, we have a great bunch of musicians, so a lot <laughs> is really, really possible. Yeah. Um, we've thrown around the idea. I think um, right now we're really knocking this one down. Yeah. And uh, hand, handling what we got going on right now, and we'll see what happens. It's always in the horizon. Yeah, um, which is fine with me. Yeah, you know, a cool, a cool idea uh, doing something like that is you, you guys could do the the Faith No More tribute, and then you know maybe even open up for yourselves doing you know a couple of original <laughs> tunes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're throwing that idea around. Yeah, that that would, that would be cool. I, I get I get paid double for that part. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, keep, Holy cow. <laughs> keep it keep it all in the family. You know, two two different set, totally different sets. And I mean, even I even heard Def Leppard did that. They um, on their last tour, they they opened up for themselves. They they um, came up with a different band name. Like I forget what it was, but something crazy like Dan Flat Flatbread or something like that. And um, and nobody even knew it was them because they were dressed up in costumes. So you know, um, it's that's, not too far that's from. The bonus <laughs> of having costumes, yeah. they get away with stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the idea to bring out the costumes, not for the Faith No More band, for other just pretending that we're some other tribute band. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, I, I really enjoyed talking to you guys. Now, before I let you go, is there anything else you'd like to say to the people who've been listening to this? Do we have some shows coming up? <laughs> I think, I think so. Let me... And that would all be up on... Yeah, uh, July 9th, and we're playing in August somewhere. Okay. And then uh, I think Baby Jesus is planning on coming to a couple of the shows. So you should probably be to And the... And Paladinos, the uh, Okay. And, and the Paladinos. And people can find all, all this info on the Facebook page, I would imagine, right? Oh, it's on the Facebook page. It's, yeah. And he's August 5th in North Hollywood. Okay. We're doing uh, We're doing a really cool... Show. They have a really cool thing there called uh, Rockaholic Karaoke, where uh, you'll have people like Nick from Cold Chamber and Victor from Song will show up, and oh. everybody just jumps up on stage and does stuff like uh, Cowboys from Hell. It's oh, wow. Badass. <laughs> wow, well, um, Will and Carrie, I really enjoyed talking. I want to thank you guys for taking time out of your very busy schedule to do this. I can't thank you enough. Um, just to let you know, the interview will probably be going up in a week or two, but the minute it does, I'll be sure to let you know so you can tell all your friends and fans about it. But um, thanks so much for doing this. I can't thank you enough. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Okay, well, really you, cool. you guys have a great night, and, and I'll be in touch as soon as the interview goes up so you can check it out and let me know what you think. But thanks so much for doing this. Um, it's been great Absolutely. talking to you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.